Now for more insight on this topic, we cross over to Scott Schober. He's president and CEO of Berkeley Varitronic Systems. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Now, Scott, when you look at some of the advances of, say, the last five, ten years, just how smart and connected are appliances today? Well, it's amazing the difference. It's transformation, really, what's happening. All the major manufacturers are introducing Internet of Things smart technology embedded in refrigerators, dishwashers, everything throughout our really our homes, and it affects our lives. In fact, they, they talk about 200 billion connected devices to the Internet by the year 2020. So it's a major transformation that will affect us all. Now, Scott, would you say that these companies are actually making things easier for consumers, or is it just more gadgets that we really don't need? Yeah, probably a combination of the two, and some are a hybrid. In, in some cases, like throughout China, there's been a widespread adoption of the Internet of Things air conditioners, for example, because there, what do they have? A very low-cost air conditioner that's extremely efficient, not using much electricity, so that's widespread adoption and people gravitate toward it. There's a lot of other internet connected things throughout our home that are more gadgets and, and may or may not connect depending upon what, what the market really bears. So if you add up some of these things that people have in their homes, these smart gadgets, just how big is the market? Well, it really, it really depends. There's a lot of crazy projections out there, but something, just think about like the smart home. By the year 2020, they're, they're saying there should be a market size of about $121 billion in different devices, sensors within our home. And then within that, even smaller markets in different niches that, that are just ex supposed to explode. So we really have to wait and see. It depends upon what the industry actually accepts and what conveniences really are convenient and not just gadgets there. So when it comes to this growth that we're seeing, who's really driving it? Is it by age? Is it by the amount of money people make? Who's really pushing this? Yeah, a combination of things, but certainly younger generations. Think about this. Who of us 10 years ago thought we'd be so connected to our mobile phone? Nowadays, people can't be separated from their mobile phone. That same generation of people so tied to their mobile phone, that's who's going to embrace the IoT, the Internet of Things technology, because much of the Internet of Things is really going to be controlled by apps from what? Our mobile phone. So it's a natural fit, and it's a very easy sell to migrate those consumers to the Internet of Things, again, in our homes, in our cars, in our lives in general. Now, not all gadgets take off and do so well. We're still kind of seeing a bit of touch and go with wearables. But as you mentioned, smartphones, now we don't know how we ever lived without them. So when do you yeah. think we'll see a similar mass adoption, say, of, say, these smart homes? Well, I, th I think it's just a matter of the next couple of years as products un un unveil. As you mentioned, some of the leaders really there, the, the Googles, the Amazons, the Apple computer, they've got so many interesting devices that draw us in. You, you look at something even as simple a couple of years ago, the Nest, the thermostat, really, that's an Internet of Things connected to the Internet. It's starting to do more, get more successful and drawing people in, saying, wow, this is interesting. This does make my life easier and it's more convenient. And I think the people that, the companies that can do that will draw the people in. Now, Scott, we're also seeing that, that we're seeing more Chinese white goods, so-called white goods makers. What sort of impact do you think they're going to have on the industry? Well, I, I think that will be huge. However, the big caution there, a lot of times we, we associate things manufactured in China to low cost. And that's good because it, it helps the consumer. But low cost also often translates to low security. And that's a huge concern from the, the standpoint of hackers. They're going to be targeting vulnerabilities in these white goods, these different smart appliances that are in all of our homes, because not enough money and attention is being placed on the security aspect. Now, as you mentioned security, also expense can be an issue for some people. What are the real concerns consumers have when it comes to really getting more on board with this smart technology? Number one thing that comes to my mind, again, I'll go back to the analogy of our mobile phone. Every two years, we, we trade in our mobile phone, we get the next advanced model. And throughout that cycle, the life cycle of two years, we're updating our OS and the security patches throughout. Now, in the world of the Internet of Things, the IoT in our smart homes, that is very difficult to update our refrigerator, where there the life cycle might be about 15 years for general for a refrigerator or appliances overall. How do we update these when they're actually hacked? Are there security patches available? How do we upload the firmware, the software, to make them 
safe so they don't keep getting repeated hacks. That has not really been properly addressed yet in the Internet of Things and the smart home and the smart appliances. So more attention and concern and spending has to be done there up front before these products get released to market. R right now it's about 5.5 million devices each day are connected in to the Internet. That's an astounding amount of things each and every day. So more has to be spent toward security. And as you mentioned, people are going to keep a refrigerator for, say, 15 years. It's, it's not yeah. the same with a smartphone. So with that yeah. being said, what are some of the things that consumers can do then to alleviate their concerns or perhaps even just really protect themselves? Yeah, great, great point. R really, consumers need to be smart. They need to ask the manufacturers, what type of security is in this? Is there encryption, end-to-end -end encryption? Is there strong passwords that you implement when setting up these devices on the Internet? You need to think these things out. And, and question, do I really need to connect this device into the Internet? Are the conveniences worth that versus comparing it to the risks of privacy and security? Those are important questions consumers should ask before connecting. We should, we should certainly get a, at least as smart as our devices. We're going to have to leave it there, yes. but thank you so much for joining us. Scott Chauver, hey, President and CEO of Berkeley Baritronic Systems.